Hello and welcome to the seventh installment of my Helium video tutorial series. Uh, in this video we're going to go over um, recording of drums um, using some new features that have been included in the latest version. So you can see here I'm running AUM and I have three preloaded instruments. A copy of Chameleon on bus 1, a copy of EG Pulse on bus, bus 2, and a copy of Digistix on bus 3. Now two of those are drum machines so uh, I want to discuss a way of making recording drums a lot easier especially those drum machines that support the general MIDI standard. So as you can see here I have a few notes uh, entered in a piano roll and I'm outputting them to EG Pulse and uh, they're just a simple uh, uh, bass drum and snare right now. But the problem with a piano roll, as always, is knowing which notes correspond to which drums. With 127 notes to choose from, it can be a bit tedious uh, finding the right uh, drums and the location within the piano roll. So now if you tap and hold on the grid setting within Helium, we can now pick a general MIDI drum layout. And uh, if you look on the little strip on the left hand side, the piano roll has been uh, replaced by a uh, list of all the drum components within the GM drum kit. And just like the piano roll, you can tap on these uh, drum parts to actually preview them before you add them to the grid. So as I mentioned previously, uh, this data is being output to EG Pulse on uh, MIDI Bus 2. Uh, I'm going to switch to uh, MIDI Track 1 and we're going to output this to uh, Digistix, which is actually on MIDI Bus 3. Now while I've got some notes here uh, in EG Pulse, I'm going to use that as a metronome for recording onto this track. So if I long press uh, the grid layout and select Digistix, you'll see a similar thing occurs uh, as the general MIDI. We have a strip along the left hand side, which has all the drum uh, components belonging to Digistix. Now with record enabled, I can simply tap on these uh, drum part names in that left hand column uh, while recording to actually lay these parts down. And if I make a mistake, I can hit the undo button. But as you can see there, that undid everything. And that is not always what you want. So let me uh, lay down again a bass drum and snare. And then we'll go over the top with the closed and open hi-hats. Uh, just notice here though that um, I actually have um, uh, no ends um, quantized on this so all the notes are quantized to a nice length. Now as I mentioned before when you hit the undo button um, it's going to undo everything from that last the point you hit the record button so that whole recording session will be deleted when I hit that undo. Um, but there is a, a new way of making sure that when you're recording uh, um, things like uh, drums and stuff like this, um, you can push uh, to the undo buffer. So you can see here I've laid down the bass drum and snare. Now if I tap and hold on the undo, I can actually push uh, to the undo buffer. And that will take a snapshot of that current state of recording. And then I can go and add the uh, hi-hats over the top. And if anything ever went wrong, when I hit the undo, it's only going to undo that last set, that last recording, that, like the, uh, uh, the closed and open hi-hats. Okay, so that's just a convenient way of, of actually recording drums without actually using an external keyboard. Um, now, that's all well and good, but um, all the velocities, if you notice, are fixed. So what happens if you want to uh, vary the velocities of the open and closed hi-hats? Well, the easiest way to actually create some feel in there is to actually select the notes in question and use the randomize function. Uh, we now have a new mode on the randomizer which just randomizes velocities for the selected notes. Um, and so we just select those notes, uh, select the correct mode for velocity and then hit the, gen the randomize button. And you should see the varying velocities now between uh, the two rows of open and closed hi-hats. Uh, we can uh, change to uh, low complexity mode. Uh, in this uh, particular velocity mode, uh, the complexity works uh, in a different way. It's the intensity of notes. So if I put it on low, we get low intensity notes. If I put it on high, we'll get a big range of velocities 
Uh, so I put it on low for the hi-hats just to make them a little bit subdued. And as you can see here, I've changed to the probability uh, mode now and we can uh, generate a probability uh, for these uh, these notes. Um, I will say though, it, you really need to be in probability uh, mode, uh, draw mode, in order to see these properly. That's because the, the colours you can see here are denoted by velocity in this mode. Uh, in order to actually uh, visually see the probability, we need to uh, tap and hold on the edit tool and select the probability tool from there. And at that point, uh, the probabilities will show up as uh, colours ranging from red to white. Uh, so as I apply probability, you will see here um, these colours change. And don't forget, while we're in this mode, you can actually tap, hold and then drag vertically up and down to actually change the probability of a single note. Uh, and uh, so you can use that in conjunction with the uh, randomized function. So we've talked about adding dynamics to a sound, but what about um, timing and what about adding swing? So let's uh, long press the track button and solo this track. It's quite a boring track as it stands and adding a bit of swing I think will, uh, will make it sound a whole lot better. Now the way swing works in Helium is you have to select a set of notes and apply swing to them. You can either do that by just dragging a selection around the notes or by tapping and holding the select button and selecting all notes. Now the way to apply swing to the selected notes uh, in Helium is to tap and hold on the tempo button and you'll get this little toolbar up here and it allows you to pick either quarter note or eighth note um, uh, swing and in this case these are eighth notes so I'm going to pick eighth notes and I'm going to hit the apply button and you should see on the grid below that the timings have all changed. I think you'll agree that sounds a whole lot better but what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that I'm going to paint a set of quarter notes uh, quarter note mid to mid toms across this uh, this uh, loop and then I'm going to apply swing to these toms now because it's hard to see what's going on here I'm going to uh, select every other note and then change the velocity of every other note so it's slightly different so you can see what happens because and how uh, it's affected by the swing now these are quarter notes so it's important to remember to apply quarter note swing now let's preview that and see what it's done to the uh, to the toms and if we go back to the original So Helium gives the flexibility just to affect selected notes, so you don't have to apply swing to everything. So that's just about it for this tutorial on grid layout. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and see you next time.